Talking about the sports show, of course, a lot happening with the Olympic Games, and there have been some athletes that have snuck up on us, Baz, that look like we're going to produce some medal winners at this Olympic Games. So we thought we'd touch base with the man who's the development manager down there at Athletics SA. Blake's good enough to join us. Blake, how are you, mate? Good, thank you, yeah. Good. Mate, an exciting time because there have been, there's a couple of high jumpers, mate, there's a couple of runners. Suddenly, there's a focus back on the track. Definitely, yeah. A athletics in South Australia is beginning to g gain some strength and uh, yeah, we've got a couple of people on the Olympic team this year. Mate, what are you most looking forward to at these Olympic Games? Uh, looking forward to getting back to competition. Obviously, there's a lot of athletes that were a bit enamoured by the fact that the Olympics was delayed. Uh, and it actually retired a couple of our athletes. One of our uh, most celebrated uh, athletes in, in Australia for, for track and field is Jared Talent, who's won a, a number of Olympic medals in, in the race walks. And he, he was retired as a, as a result of the, the Olympics being postponed. So uh, it's, ha it's had an impact on a lot of athletes, but we've uh, been fortunate enough to get a couple of athletes on the team this year. So, hey, mate, you talked about it. Uh... You know, there's been those disruptions even for the Olympic preparation. You had to go up to a camp in Queensland because they're quarantined down in Victoria. I mean, it has been an unbelievably disruptive preparation for all sports. Absolutely. But, but the team sports tend to be able to get around each other. You know, they, they suffer together. That camp for you with coaches missing, athletes missing, did it seem like a, a different type of camp? Yeah, look, it's a challenging environment at the moment. It's very fluid. Uh, a lot of states going into lockdowns and, and border restrictions and things makes it difficult to organise camps and, and preparations for uh, an international championships, especially. Uh, I mean, at the moment with the Olympic camps, there's some athletes that are stuck in New South Wales, can't even get up to, to join their uh, national teammates uh, in Cairns. So uh, it is challenging, but uh, those challenges are, are consistently being worked through by the staff at Athletics Australia. and. And obviously, as, as affiliates to that, we get called up, uh, are called upon to help when we can. So, yeah, it's been a, a, quite a fluid situation at the moment. So, One of the things that has uh, surprised me, I think it might have surprised a few people, is that we now are producing some distance runners. We're, we're producing some people who can run the 10,000. Never, not that I can remember, and not being an athlete. Well, not being a runner myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to but, run with a cigarette you, in your you, hand, mate. <laughs> you, do, you do notice when these things happen because you can't remember it happening before. But we've got quite a few now that are, are pretty good. Uh, well, when I say pretty good, they're, they're running great times. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, we, we've had some success in the past. I mean, Lisa on Decky is one that comes sure, to mind. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, th there's been a little bit of success, but... Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in success begets more success and, and when we've had success in the past, we've had Jess Trengrove come through, uh, it's inspired yeah. a lot of young yeah. runners and, and having that squad mentality around uh, successful athletes, uh, yeah, distance running in South Australia is at a very, very strong point and I mean, we had quite a successful national championships for, for our South Australian athletes Absolutely. and we've, we've had consistent success in, in cross country and those sorts of things so, and that all, all breeds a uh, culture of success in South Australia. So. Yeah. Um, we're quite quite lucky to have uh, quite a good group of athletes and, and a good culture in that sense. So it's quite strong at the moment. The two athletes in question, we've got Matt Clark, who's a 3,000 metre steeplechaser. Yep. Uh, he just scraped in. Uh, he was a late call-up, actually. It's a great um, story, that one. Yeah, fantastic yeah, story. story. So, yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's, a, he's a great guy, and, and it was l uh, lovely to see him get the call-up. And uh, Izzy Bat Doyle is, a, is another yep. one. She, she qualified in her own right, and she's a, she's a fantastic athlete. She's worked really hard over the years to, to get to where she is and she's had some some amazing uh, success this year especially and and in coming up from where she was she's developed incredibly over the last 12 to 18 months so, so quickly that's so quickly because if you if you read her story it's an amazing jump well, she, she had those well she went to college in the states mm. and, and went to new york first then changed and went to washington and then it ran really well there. I think she was third in the NCAA 10,000 metres, if memory serves me right. But then she had, in a two-year period, she had six stress fractures in her foot. So wow, she's done yeah. well to get Amazing. over the stress fractures. To, because Amazing. Yeah. yeah. What, what, and then, of course, we talked about Maddie before. Took 10 seconds off his personal best and still <laughs> was out by point something to, to qualify. And then gets a phone call while he's sitting with his girlfriend. He's, he's devastated he hasn't made it. Then he gets a phone call saying he's made it. That was an amazing story. Yes. And uh, I think part, just so the viewers understand about Matty, the other thing is what, he was also training a blind athlete, wasn't he? Yes. So he'd, he'd called him on the, note, on, the, on the notice that he'd missed out on the Olympics to say he was going to be his training partner to help him prepare. 
they had to call him back to say, you won't believe it, I've just received a phone call, I'm going. So find your own partner, mate, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but both of those are really unique stories in athletics, aren't they? Absolutely, Absolutely yeah. yeah. And look, it's it's... I guess speaks to their character as well. And if you if you look at Matty and, and the way that he immediately went and thought of other people once his opportunity yep. was uh, was not there, uh, you know, it just talks to the character of these two people. So I want to ask you personal best time of ten seconds over the steep. It's an amazing amount of time that he was able to take off. What do you reckon drove him, Blake? What what bought that personal best bite? You know, if you took a second or two, you go that was pretty good. But ten seconds is a massive slice. Yes. What, yeah. what do you reckon? Just the fact that he knew he had to run his best to get that time to get to the Olympics? Definitely. I think given the, the way that the selections are working at the moment and it goes on an international quota basis, so if you don't make the qualifying time, uh, there's a roll-down quota and that goes globally. Um, so if a country decides to take, uh, and they can take up to three athletes, uh, then that takes those spots out of the quota and it rolls down and unfortunately Matt was sitting at 46. Yeah. Um, but again, you, you've got to kind of put yourself up there to, to get within the quota or close enough to. Um, and so I guess that was what's driving him. Uh, the, the squad mentality, the culture, the, the coach, all of his team behind the, the scenes, I mean, that all pushes you along. And at the end of the day, it's up to you. So, uh, you know, it shows his grit and determination. So, Blake, I'm going to put you under the pump here. Who's our smoky? Who should we be looking out for? when we're watching the Olympics this year. It can be Australian, it doesn't have to be necessarily South Australian, but we've got a smoky out there that is gonna surprise somebody. There's quite a few and anything can happen on the day. I think distance running is one of those things where at a championships, they run very differently to when they're running for time. Yep. Uh, so those, those competitions are always gonna be uh, wait and see and, and who's best on the day mm. uh, in whatever race is run. So they're, they're always going to be, uh, I guess, ones to watch. Sure. Um, our, our talented athletes are, are our talented athletes. They will always be. We've got some really good. Uh, Matt Denny in the discus, for for example, is, oh, yeah, is one that yeah. I'm looking yeah. um, forward to watching. He, on his day, can throw a, a really, a really good throw. And yeah. uh, again, it's the best on the day. Uh, we've just got um, a world champion, uh, fresh from 2019, in in the javelin. And we've got some very strong competitors in the javelin, Kelsey Lee Barber. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. not throwing her best at the moment, but again, it's, uh, it's where you are on the day. So mm. uh, yeah, athletics is, is a brilliant sport to watch for that exact reason. And you know, it's, it's about watching the best athletes in the world fight and it you're out. Gonna, so. And you're gonna do it on one day. That, that's what gets me. You trained for four years. If you get it slightly wrong on the day, it, it just seems like four years down the drain. That, it's such a cutthroat thing, isn't it, the Olympics? It's, you know, if you, produce like a 10 second uh, improvement on your yep. time and in any sport, you're gonna win something. <laughs> you yeah, really, you're at that level you, you would think that yeah, would yeah. win something. So it is, it's, that, it's that moment, it's that, Absolutely. it's like the 100 metres, it's the moment. It's, it, here it is, it's in front of you. And it's who best handles it, I think. I did. Hey, Matty, do you reckon, will, will Matty be a Clark? Uh, will Matty be a chance to beat Kerry O'Brien's record and move him up the ladder? You know, because they're within, I mean, I've got it written down here. So Kerry O'Brien's record, just so you know, his best time ever, yeah. great Kerry O'Brien, was 8.21.98. And at the moment, Maddie's best, Maddie Clark's best is 8.22.62. So wow. for yeah. whatever reason, mate, anything under a second seems to torture poor Maddie. But uh, <laughs> you, I reckon he's a chance at the Olympics to beat him, to, to go up the ladder. Do you feel the same? Definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, he, he raced two fantastic races back to back, just missed out on the qualifying time. He's obviously very close to to carry his record. Um, once he gets into that race mentality, there's the adrenaline, there's the, there's the moment. Um, you know, like I said, they're not racing for time, but if he gets into a good rhythm and, and he gets up to that stage where he's, he's looking close, he's got the right people around him, uh, he, he'll absolutely have it in him. Hey mate, just before we let go, your career finished 2016. You snapped at Achilles, mate. How is it now? <laughs> oh, it's okay, yeah, I'm back yeah. running, so. You're back yeah. running? Yeah. <laughs> not quite the same pace? Definitely not quite the same face. <laughs> you would have thought twice about coming back running after <laughs> doing an Achilles. Yeah. There's nothing like worse than doing an Achilles. I mean, the only thing that happens shortly, there's a short window after the Olympics where everybody's been focused, be it the swimming, be it the track, be it the basketball, whatever, that gives you as a development offer just that small window to get out there and, and kids are suddenly interested in it again. And it's the one carrot that track and field has to dangle to stop a player going to AFLW or going to netball. Is that a pivotal time? 
for you coming after the Olympic Games? Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, we, we have some quite stiff competition in those commercial sports. Yep. Uh, and the one thing they can't offer is the Olympics. Uh, yep. And that's, that's a dream that every kid has. When they're very young, they watch the Olympics and they go, I want to do that. And that's what a lot of our, our athletes, uh, I guess, how they got that inspiration to, to continue on and, and stay in the sport. And um, so what we're going to look to try and do is, is promote that as, as, a, yep. as a sport that has that pathway. Uh, and we're going to reach out to our schools and, and our communities to try and promote the sport and, and everything good that it, it can offer as well. So, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, things in place that are mm, really like, really appreciate your time. Good mate. luck, mate. Last question before we get you go. We try to put you under the pump. This last one, mate. Other than <laughs> track and field, what's the event for you to watch at the Olympic Games? What gets you? Big fan of the gymnastics, just yeah. for the raw raw talent and the the skill and, and everything. I'm a huge fan of uh, of that. But the swimming for for me is always a, a, sw a soft spot. Uh, I've got a, a few mates that have, have been through the Olympic team, and yep. uh, yeah, it, again, it's one of those things that we've had such good success with uh, as a, as an Olympic team uh, over the years. So looking forward to that continuing. Hey Blake, really appreciate you coming in, mate. You're doing a ripping job developing athletics here in South Australia. Stay with us. A bit more to come on the show.